Hello, so I don't know how to tell if people are on or not. I know I can see the comments, so if you're connecting, let me know. I'll get started in a couple of minutes at 11 a.m. So hang tight till then.
Alrighty. So it's 11 o'clock now, so I will get started. Um, I do want to apologize. I didn't realize that uh, Facebook Live doesn't have the screen sharing option that Zoom does. So I was going to try to present this to you through the screen sharing, um, not through this video, but uh, this seems like the easiest solution that I have for now. So I will try to post the slides after the video um, so you can look at it if you have trouble seeing them in the video. Anyway, so I am Kelsey Cronin. I am a fourth year uh, graduate student in the College of Optical Sciences, and I am here to talk about near-infrared radiation, a little bit about its history, um, its applications. We use it a lot in everyday life. And then I'll show you some quick demos on ways that you can see it in your own home, and then uh, something a little bit more exotic and cool. So yeah, let me get started. So what is near-infrared radiation? So uh, infrared is defined as the uh, out, uh, light outside the visible spectrum that we can't see, but we can feel as heat. So uh, most people realize that it's um, above the visible light, so it's between 700 and about 1050 nanometers. Um, most people think of this as the um, light that comes from the sun that you can feel the heat on your skin. Put that up there. Um, so uh, near-infrared radiation was discovered in 1800 by William Herschel. Um, he actually created an experiment that directed sunlight through a glass prism that you can see here to create a spectrum. Um, so he was interested in, he noticed um, temperature fluctuations in light, and so he was interested to figure out if there was like set differences. Um, so when a prism creates a spectrum, you have the Roy G. Biv, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, blue indigo, violet. Um, and so that spreads out. And that's what you can see here. So what William did is he put different thermometers. And just like the thermometers, the mercury thermometers that we think about, he just put those in there. And he um, was able to observe that each light produced a different temperature. Um, so as he measure, measured the individual temperatures, um, he noticed that all of the colors had temperature higher than the control. So he had a control that was outside in the shadows, so it wasn't getting any light. Um, moreover, he found that the temperature of the colors increased from violet to the red part of the spectrum. Um, after noticing this pattern, he decided to measure the temperature just beyond the red portion of the spectrum in a region where no sunlight was visible. And to his surprise, he found that, th found that this region had the highest temperature of all because he expected that only the light produced the heat. His results were the first to demonstrate that there is, not, that there is light not visible to the human eye. Now, at the time, he thought it was something different. He didn't think it was light. He thought it was something else that was producing this heat, but his per um, hypothesis was proved wrong in 1835 um, when Ampere demonstrated that the only difference between light and what he named infrared radiation was the wavelength. Um, so, and then further on, the first near infrared spectrum to proving Ampere's theory was measured in 1881 by Abney and Festing, uh, and they used photographic uh, plates. I couldn't find much on what exactly they did to um, find this spectrum, but here's a cool picture using photographic plates of near-infrared light. Um, so further on down the history, the most important pioneer of infrared spectroscopy, um, which is a very common application of infrared radiation, um, was William Koblenz. For his thesis work at Cornell, he built two infrared spectrometers, which is Impressive, <laughs> considering how much I've gotten done. Um, his larger one in the lower right had energy limitations that only allowed it to measure down to seven microns. But his smaller one, this one here, was able to measure to uh, much smaller um, precision. Um, once he then graduated, after building these, he was then hired on and he proceeded to measure the infrared spectrum of 135 pure compounds. This became the standard that held for like many, many years, like over 10 years. So that's enough about history. I hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the applications of infrared light. And this is really hard to see, I'm sorry about that. Um, but one of the main um, applications that uh, farmers and agriculturists use is uh, 
they use the photography to assess plant health. So healthy plants absorb most of the visible light while reflecting a large amount of the near infrared light. So you can actually see where you have the lighter ones are the healthy ones, whereas the dark here, those aren't so healthy plants. Or in this case, it's probably dirt along the edge. So you can see the patches of unhealthy plants there. Another uh, common application is fruit and vegetable inspections. Um, so there's these cool um, small handheld devices um, that uh, use absorbency properties in the near infrared that measure the chlorophyll content of the fruit. And so, you know, if they have more chlorophyll, they're a little bit healthier. If they have less, then they're not as healthy. So that tells uh, a grocer or someone else like further down the chain whether or not the food is still healthy and edible. So stepping away from agriculture a little bit, um, we can also talk about the vis visualization in the medical field. So as you can see from these pictures here, um, you can, using near infrared light, you can actually look at veins, um, malignant cancers, and um, actually brain um, injuries and other diseases as well. But it's important that it's uh, near the skin. It's hard to see something deep into the skin with near infrared because it gets blocked quite easily. So I will actually be showing this a little bit later in our demo, but there are currency security features that are not visible to the human eye. So this picture here is a classic $10 bill. And then this here is what you see with a near infrared camera. There's this big spot taken out of it, which is actually pretty impressive because I wouldn't be able to tell with my plain eye. <sighs> Other applications include um, inspecting of solar wafers uh, using absorption um, effects as well, um, traffic monitoring installations, infrared re um, reflectography um, is, investigate, um, is used to investigate drawings beneath oil paintings, another one that I can show later, and they'll also use it in pharmacology. So here's the near infrared image, and here's just the regular black and white image that you would see. And then this is another image that's also taken, which is more on the uh, higher infrared range. But yeah, so that's all for my presentation. But now I will talk about a couple of quick demos. I guess we'll start with the one that you can do at home. So this one is surprisingly easy and most people wouldn't think of it. But with a TV remote or most remotes, um, the power button or the signal that they use is actually near infrared. Unfortunately, because of um, the uh, filter on my camera, I won't be able to show you. But if you look at your TV remote and you hit a button that signals it to do something, so like power on or whatever, um, you can see, you'll see that there's no light. So it doesn't you don't see anything, right? Well, if I point this at the camera and use it, you can actually see that light. And that is because the cameras on um, your computer cameras, as well as cell phone cameras, you can see it on your cell phone as well, um, have near infrared um, filters, which filter in the light so that we can see it with the human eye. So you should be able to see it. If you can't, <laughs> then, <laughs> um, I, but I'm pretty sure it's my camera that has that filter on it. So you should be able to see it through the video. But if you get a remote at home, and look at it, turn the button, look at it, and then get your, even your camera, your phone camera, computer, phone camera, you can turn it on and look through that, and that should be able to show you that infrared light. So that's a pretty cool, easy at home demo. The next demo is a little bit uh, harder to do because we use uh, an IR camera. <laughs> Let me set it up real quick. So first off, this is our near infrared camera. You can see the little points on it and then using this over here, you can see that it's looking back at my screen. <laughs> but yeah, so if we point this camera a little bit towards me, we can actually do that $10 bill security feature that I was talking about. So we look at it here um, 
we can see that it's just the regular $10 bill. Um, but then if you push it up, and then we'll look at it in here, should, oh wow, that's really bright, sorry. But yeah, so if I pull it back a little bit, you can see these, oh geez, give me a second, sorry. Um, yeah, so there you can see that it's a little different than if you looked just straight through the video. It's hard to tell because it's so bright, but I wonder if I turned off the lights, if that would help. Um, but yeah, so you can really see this one, this one here. It's a little harder to see the one in the middle. You guys see that all right? Or do you want me to try to turn off the lights and show you again? Um, but yeah, so that's the security features on the $10 bill. And then I also mentioned that we had the oil paintings. And so we have a cool picture that I will show you here. Um, it's, oh no, the light behind it makes it a little hard to see, but it's just a red oil painting. So visually you can only see the red oil. But if we flip it around here, you can see Wilbur in the photo. And that's because they use the oil painting techniques of putting the infrared, um, Wilbur in a paint that is only detected by infrared technology and not by, uh, not by, and it's not supposed to be detected by the visible eye, although you can do that in some situations. But yeah, so that, gives you the remote control demo and a little visual representation with a cool IR camera. Um, another little trick that we have is a infrared sensor. It's this little sensor and you can see this block here. So it's not lit up at all, but to prove that we do have infrared light here, um, if I push this, oh geez, press this button here, um, you can see on the light, oh geez, sometimes you can see that there is infrared light on that sensor because it lights up red. But yeah, so that's about all I have for you guys. Is there any questions or anything I can answer right away? I'll give you a couple minutes, um, but then yeah, that's it. And I will try to post the slides underneath the live video. So yeah, any questions? Well, if not, I can always um, have you guys uh, message me through here or um, yeah, that's probably the best way. Just um, comment with a question and I can respond to it that way. I think that's it. So thanks for listening.